Uh, but welcome everyone again to uh, SciStarter Live. We are talking about discover how to identify oil spills in Nigeria, the Niger Delta from online satellite images. And we have quite a few guests with us. So I'm going to stop my share for a moment and have some introductions from each of them um, to say hello and explain um, why they're involved in the project Land Pollution Lookout, uh, which is what we're learning about today. So um, Victor, do you want to um, start us off and say who you are and why you're here? Oh, yeah, great. I, I hope you can hear me. Uh oh. You Hello, can. can you hear me? We can hear you. Can you hear me? Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Victor Sunday is my name, um, the national coordinator of Unique Mapas Network. And the uh, Unique Mapas Network Nigeria is a local community of student science. I might actually, Victor, if you can hear me, can you turn your video off? Sometimes that helps with the bandwidth. Uh, we carry a lot of uh, civil science projects and uh, can, can you know? Uh, we can sort of hear you, but I'm going to stop your video so can that you can help your bandwidth. Oh, okay. Yeah, thank you. Ah, uh oh. I thought I stopped this video, but maybe it didn't work. Stop video. Uh, well, while we're trying to. There we go. Okay. Victor, do you want to try again if we can hear you? Okay. Beautiful. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Beautiful. Yeah. We heard everything. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just to repeat what I've just said, uh, land pollution lookout is one of those inside projects uh, we are carrying out uh, in collaboration with Healthy Girl. Uh, North Eastern University and uh, Science Data. And today we want to have a review of that uh, project again uh, to ensure that participants globally and in Nigeria uh, keep on contributing to that data analysis for land pollution lookout in Nigeria. Thank you. And uh, here with me is Kinsley Lechiku. Uh, yeah, Kinsley, do you have uh, more to add uh, to that? or to introduce yourself to. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Um, my name is Ken Selechi Kajuku. Uh, I'm a member of Unique Mappers. I participated in land pollution lookout in Niger Delta, and it was actually a very impressive one on how we can actually use satellite remote sensing to solve a problem on uh, land uh, oil spillage. So I'm very, very, very happy to be here. Uh, thank you, everyone. Awesome. And then Caroline, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, definitely. Hey, everybody. My name is Caroline Nickerson. I'm with the SciStarter team. And I'm an advisor. I've been honored to work with Victor for a few years now. We're really excited to be supporting the Unique Mappers with a scholarship coming up. So, Victor, I'm going to try to get that sent over, hopefully later today. But, yeah, um, my history of the project, I um, championed Land Loss Lookout which um, I know Victor will be able to talk to you about, or I can also um, elaborate on as well when we get to the slides. Um, but Land Loss Lookout was a project where people were able to um, document wetland loss um, on the Gulf Coast of the United States. Um, so that means that people would look through an online program at the satellite imagery and classify what type of wetland loss was occurring. And the Unique Mappers, the group that Victor leads in Nigeria, they just dominated that. They classified so so, so, so helpful. Um, and then the, the collaboration just naturally came about because it was Healthy Gulf and Northeastern and Cardoscope that were running Land Loss Lookout. And through my platform as Miss Louisiana Earth, and I had the pageant title, I was helping, you know, galvanize volunteers to get involved because Unique Mappers were such a force and um, they had really demonstrated um, such expertise. Um, we uh, worked with them to start Land Pollution Lookout, where people able, were able to use the same technologies to help document oil spills um, on the Niger Delta. And you can do this from anywhere in the world to help people out on the Niger Delta. So that's why I find this, these two projects in particular so inspirational. You know, people from Nigeria uh, participated to document Gulf Coast, which is my home in the United States, 
And now I'm able to participate in Land Pollution Lookout to document an environmental problem that's happening in their home base and um, on the Niger Delta. Uh, so it's a, it, it makes me happy. You can still participate. I think there are some technical glitches at the moment, um, but you can join both projects on SciStarter and just stay tuned for Land Loss Lookout and Land Pollution Lookout. Land Loss Lookout, once again, is for the Gulf Coast. Land Pollution Lookout is for the Niagara Delta. You can participate from anywhere. And um, yeah, I think uh, I'll yield most of my time to Victor today. I'll send the link directly right to Oh, sorry. Thank you, Caroline, for that introduction. Actually, before we move forward, I'm going to actually play the intro video that um, that the uh, land pollution lookout uses for um, for the beginning of the training, just to describe what it is to put us all in the same um, in the same space of. Did you know that? Of course. Then I'm getting that, so I will fix that first. Um, but this is just a video that you'll watch as a as someone who's about to participate, just to give a good uh, introduction to what you'll be doing, and then I'm going to turn it over to Victor to talk about um, what this project means to him and how it's how it's developed over time since it did come from after land um, land loss lookout too. And we can talk about that as well. So I'm gonna share my screen again with the sound. If anyone has trouble or hearing the sound, FYI, um, you can go onto the link that was just dropped in the chat. Instead, you are more than welcome to do that because sometimes the audio does have like a, or the video will be in uh, a bit of a delay. So you're welcome to watch this later as well, but I'll share it for the moment. All right, let's turn that audio back on. Being the largest river delta in Africa, the Niger Delta region is known for its rich biodiversity and oil and gas resources, which have been the bedrock of Nigeria economy for over 50 years and has also provided livelihoods for millions of people. The region currently has three sites listed as Ramsar wetlands of international importance, yet nationally and locally, it is continuously degraded by unsustainable practices and is plagued with a colossal tray of pollution and oil spill. Since the inception of the Nigeria oil sector, over 13 million tons of crude oil have been reported as spilled in the Niger Delta as a result of operational failures, sabotage, pipeline vandalism, well blowouts, and engineering failure. Sites affected by oil spills caused by oil exploitation activities have been identified as a major environmental and social economic problem in the region. This is because the livelihood and economy of the local communities are tied to environmental resources, such as healthy soil for agriculture and contaminant free water bodies for fishing, irrespective of the ongoing small scale remediation activities and much improved technologies for exploration and exploitation. The Niger Delta is still the most degraded delta with its mangroves, wetlands, and all other biological resources being polluted. It is important to draw attention to the shrinking mangrove forests, which serve as a form of natural coastal defense against rising sea level and erosion, while also providing rich biodiversity, well-being, and food security. Mangrove areas have been rapidly degraded, not only due to oil pollution, but also due to urbanization. The forest recorded a depletion of 29.09% of its extent as at 2016. It has actually helped us to identify oil spill area in the Niger Delta, Nigeria. You can also be a participant. Your participation will help us to locate more oil spill sites in the region. A short tutorial will teach you how to identify oil spill area and its impact on flora and fauna present in this ecosystem. After the tutorial, you will be asked to look for those patterns in recent satellite images. By looking out together, we can help protect and restore this irreplaceable delta. Alrighty. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and unshare my screen. So uh, now that we have a firm base of what we're exactly talking about, I want to turn it over to 
um, to Victor, if he's able to unmute, um, to explain like, where did this project um, come from? Where did this come about? Who are the, the people behind it? We'd love to know more. Um, and then Kingsley as well, if you'd like to interject or comment on anything, you're welcome to also um, talk during that time as well. Um, oh, there you go. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, yeah, the Land Pollution Lookouts uh, is a project that was initiated by Unique Mapas in collaboration with uh, Northeastern University, Healthy Gulf, and Science Data. And that we uh, embarked on it uh, during the Student Science uh, uh, Global Month of 2022. Uh, prior to that, uh, we already participated in a land loss uh, uh, lookout in Louisiana, just like Karina mentioned, and uh, that ignited our passion. And they uh, wanted to look out uh, pollution uh, issues in Niger Delta uh, so that uh, we can actually compare uh, the pollution pattern between uh, Louisiana, which is a wetland, and that of uh, Niger Delta also, which is a wetland. And so uh, we had to uh, 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 create a project uh, covering uh, specific areas in Niger Delta, and that's specifically the, um, the, uh, uh, the Ramsar websites uh, in, and the uh, Ogoniland uh, OSP hotspots. And uh, we were able to uh, extract satellite imagery that shows the patterns of uh, 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 the area, the pattern of uh, uh, oil spill, uh, potential oil spill uh, 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 pollution, uh, the pattern of uh, uh, pipeline, the pattern of uh, damaged vegetation, as well as uh, the creek. And now these four patterns uh, helps us to see or helps us to analyze and find out uh, how uh, the area is being polluted because uh, we're identifying, uh, engaging uh, volunteers, engaging citizen science all over to identify this pattern will uh, over and over again gives us the accuracy level of uh, uh, the validation of this satellite imagery that actually these areas are being polluted. Now in Niger Delta, we have more than 900 uh, OSP hotspots uh, uh, that are especially spread over the area. And so we wanted to see, uh, 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 engage citizens to analyze and identify for themselves uh, so that we can actually verify uh, the accuracy of this pattern uh, following the OSP uh, hotspots that have been identified. And so, uh, yeah, last year, uh, 2022 Student Science Global Month, April. Uh, we're able to engage more than 300 volunteers uh, from Unique Mapas community and uh, beyond, and they all participated in this. And so this uh, 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 land pollution lookout project is still on, and uh, we want to see everyone uh, who is passionate about student science project, passionate about contributing to data analysis, data validation, uh, to still go to Catascope, and then you'll be able to identify the patterns and uh, we'll be able to have more accuracy uh, for the validation of uh, uh, OSP land pollution in Niger Delta. Yeah, Victor, that was a great summary. And actually, Emma, I know this is a little off script, but that blog post I, my student um, and I have been working on that I sent you, maybe we could pull that up so we could show some of the community members behind Land Pollution Lookout. I know we had some of them in the at the bottom of the post. And for those of you, you know, watching at home, you're getting a sneak preview of um, a blog post that's gonna come out um, sometime soon. But I thought that might, Victor, you'll enjoy this too, I think, and Kingsley as well. It just spotlights some of the awesome uh, unique mappers and others who have participated in the project. All right. And actually, am I post in the chat if you need the link handy? I, oh, you I got it. it. You're good. Is this where you wanted me to put it? 
Yeah, this is perfect. Yeah, so everybody, just so you can see some of the awesome faces and names behind the project. Um, we got Dyke. She said, nice project, learning a lot. Um, we got Chigbu. Chigbu said, this project is a project worth high commendation. Participating in it opened my eyes to land loss and how it could be controlled. I appreciate and support this. Um, and I mean, the list really goes on. It's very exciting. We got, um, yeah, if you want to just keep scrolling through. And there's Victor, which is awesome. Yeah. 121 volunteers. Yay. Nice. Oh, and a lot of images being classified. Wow. <laughs> Which is awesome. Yeah. That's excellent. So I, I'm curious to see like what moves past or moving past like the project in existence. What are the outcomes that we hope to have for like land loss, um, land loss lookout? What were those outcomes that we want to replicate or what's the hope for both of the projects when we get more participation and more um, involvement in these projects? Um, I'll let Victor and Kingfley chime in, but for Land Lost Lookout, what I've heard from the Healthy Gulf, Northeastern, and Cardoscope teams is a big part of it is raising awareness. Um, now that they're able to document a problem, they can go to local leadership and advocate for policy changes um, or, you know, the remediation of those wetlands. Um, and there are some research papers that are coming out based on the project. Um, and the volunteer uh, classifications were found to be very accurate, more accurate than some of the researcher annotations sometimes. I think that's a common theme we see with citizen science projects. So it was a great evidence-based result about what type of wetland loss was occurring and where, which can be used as a jumping off point for positive change and working with local leadership. But um, I know Victor and Kingsley can speak a little bit more to the land pollution lookout and the, the goals and outcomes there. Yeah, uh, from this end, uh, last year, uh, with the outcome of the uh, participation, uh, participants, uh, just like you can see there, we had uh, uh, more than 121 volunteers and uh, who contributed. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think this is for land loss lookout. Yeah, we, we that's for landlord lookout. I think that's pictures for landlords lookout. We have another one for land pollution uh, lookout for last year. And uh, that helped us to actually validate that those areas are quite vulnerable to OSP pollution. And uh, uh, it also helps to drive a, a policy change, a, 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 a advocacy for sustainable uh, 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 management of the environment uh, because identifying more of the uh, validating the oil spill uh, 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 pollution areas uh, helps to provide access to data uh, that will help uh, drive uh, 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 remediation process, helps to uh, provide uh, environmental uh, conflict management and so on. So those are the uh, uh, outcomes uh, for this particular project. And uh, uh, we're, we're not done yet. And everyone is also encouraged to contribute. And uh, uh, let's have more accuracy. Let's have more contribution uh, added to the platform. Yeah, thank you. Uh, excellent. Did you uh, did you say that there was remediation uh, efforts already started? Those have already started, or are they? Um, will they start at the end of the uh, when we have more participation and when there is a lot more data in? I don't... Yeah, identifying those areas uh, would guide uh, mm -hmm. uh, the policymakers, the uh, remediation agencies, the federal agencies, and so on. Guide them to. Uh, really asserting that, yeah, these are the areas where remediation is uh, uh, permanent, that is really uh, needed. And so uh, validating those satellite imageries uh, helps to provide access to data that will uh, uh, drive a remediation process. Excellent. Okay. 
Um, bef I think this is a good point where we can actually um, swap to showing how someone might participate. So I have a list of steps for everyone um, that I'd like to go through. And then from there, we can go to whatever you think might be um, the best to share with uh, the group here. Or if anyone has any questions, you are free to add them in um, to the chat or the Q&A and we will address them. Um, but when you sign up for, uh, or when you are a size starter, uh, account holder, you go into Size Starter in general. Um, you'll be finding it on a page that looks that has the uh, this URL on it. Which uh, Roland, you can drop this one in the chat. This one is, I think, um, on that right uh, um, on that PowerPoint. So the way to get started when you want to do this project and they want your help, so please do, uh, is to go on to slash land pollution or land dash pollution dash lookout. Um, and then if you join or visit the project, it'll send you to that page. But if you have an account, it'll also save it to your dashboard. And since this is a um, this is an affiliate, um, it'll track your contributions, which is a nice, nice, nice little perk to know how much you've been contributing to. So and also on Land Pollution Lookout, you do have a counter so you can see how many times um, or how many uh, pictures you um, you identify as well or um, that you categorize. So as mentioned before, uh, Victor, you went into talking about the four different patterns, so I won't spend much time here. Um, would you like to mention anything about these four patterns moving forward? I'll give you the better picture that we saw earlier. So this is the differentiation between them. Do you have any like tips for anyone who might wanna know um, how to best differentiate between the two or is it all in the tutorial pretty, um, or have you learned anything else since it started? Yeah, going on to the uh, Catascope uh, platform uh, for land pollution lookouts, uh, everyone is expected to look out for any of these uh, four patterns, oil spill, pipeline, uh, river, creek, and then damage vegetation. And as you can see for oil spill uh, uh, pattern, uh, you'll find out that the, uh, the vegetated area uh, looks like a patched uh, 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 land surface, uh, bare land surface uh, within a vegetated area. And you can see that the, the vegetation area is quite uh, uh, impacted. And that means that uh, there's an oil spill occurrence in that area. Uh, so that shows an oil spill pattern. And uh, where you see uh, a linear uh, uh, um, uh, uh, yeah, pattern uh, across the area that suggests a pipeline. And then you come over to River Creek and you can see uh, the pattern also uh, having a kind of uh, yeah, narrow uh, 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 gauge uh, showing a creek. Uh, that's uh, when you look at that, you'll be able to you find out that it suggests a river as a creek. And then uh, the same thing with the uh, damaged vegetation. You can see that uh, you see you can see a, a bare surface also uh, within an area, a very large area that is already impacted by uh, uh, by oil spill. So uh, uh, while you go on to identify that, it gives you either yes or no that you got it right or you didn't get it right. But what we are after is for you to run through it and you can run through it over and over again. In fact, by the time you get through the first time and then you repeat it again and again, uh, that helps to increase your awareness, that helps to increase your uh, 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 local knowledge of the, the, the environment, and that helps to give you a sense of, uh, yeah, trying to solve the problem in Niger Delta with respect to land pollution uh, lookouts. So we want to encourage everyone on board uh, to be part of this uh, land pollution lookout uh, in Niger Delta. Yeah, it is really quite astounding to look at some of these images and notice these darker spots. And before looking at this project, I had no reference point for what that would mean other than, oh, I don't know, maybe some some of the um, the plant life is um, dying in that area or whatnot. But to know that it's from an oil spill is really quite astounding to recognize. Those are really big areas um, covered in something that just does not look natural, right? And so 
what you're working on here is a really, really important task that'll, um, it kind of opens your eyes to while you're working on it as a, oh, wow, this is some serious, um, these are some serious repercussions for our, um, I don't know, innovation of using the pipelines and such and noticing what happens by um, when we use them um, in different areas. So, um, and thank you for noting, yeah, so every time you, uh, when you work on the tutorial, you're, you're uh, guessing which, which one is correct. And so it'll let you know if you're right or wrong. And then when you get to the real questions, um, and Caroline mentioned this earlier, but there is a technical issue. So if you go on now, there might be an issue. So stay tuned, but um, we will send an update email as well. Um, you can also, you can join the project on SciStarter in the meantime, and that way you'll get all the updates you need about the project. Absolutely. Yeah, good call there. Yeah, in the meantime, save it and then we'll, we'll send you a message. Um, that's excellent. And then when you're done, um, there is a follow-up survey um, about who the volunteers are. I'm curious, uh, Victor and Kingsley, do these survey results, are these survey results still in use to understand more about um, citizen science? Well, from really quickly, Emma, in terms of who the volunteers are for Land Pollution Lookout, I just remembered in that blog post we had, if you scroll down, you'll actually see the pictures of the Land Pollution Lookout volunteers. We just saw the Land Loss Lookout ones. Because um, I think the survey goes to Cardoscope, maybe not to Victor and Kingsley specifically. Oh, but um, if, if we want to get like a good idea of who like the Land Pollution Lookout volunteers are, we could go back to that blog post maybe for a second and see the folks who want shout outs. Aha, uh -huh. yes, I found them. Okay. Let's redo. There was another page. There we go. There's Scott. <laughs> oh, unless are you all saying yeah. similar? Yes, you are. Okay. These are the land pollution ones. Yes. Land pollution lookouts. We got Scott there. Got Mary. Um, and this is just a sample of the awesome volunteers, just folks who wanted a shout out, but um, you know, I think they're part of the, the amazing community that Victor has really helped create and foster. So awesome work there. <laughs> oh no, Kingsley, we need to get you on here. Unless you are on here. Oh, wow. I, I think, yeah, I think I should be there. Uh, oh no. Uh-oh. Yeah, maybe. maybe you can read out their statements. Yeah, I, I do want to be clear that the post is a work in progress. Um, I've had one of my students working on it for uh, the past few months, um, but this is just a sample of like the, the amazing people who are involved. And, you know, now that you all have seen their faces, maybe Kingsley, we can hear from you about what your experience has been like being part of the project. What has it meant to you? Um, to me, uh, the, the, the experience was actually very, very interesting. Um, I studied geoinformatics and surveying, and uh, I am really interested in machine learning uh, and artificial intelligence. And uh, I was so surprised that like uh, two weeks to three weeks ago, uh, one of the professors sent me a link that I should uh, help him in aspect of uh, uh, training and imagery to understand and or recognize the OES village in Niger data. And uh, I was so much surprised that uh, when I click on the link he sent to me using as a reference, it actually took me to, um, probably I can share my screen when I'm done to show you what I'm saying. So it actually took me to what unique mappers have actually been doing because uh, I, I don't know, but he was just like trying to use that as a reference to me to actually get to understand what he's trying to talk about. And it was very, very interesting to see that it was all these things we have been doing over the time that it actually took him as a reference. So I was so happy because I, I didn't know that we were actually creating such kind of impact because uh, sometimes we are doing a little this knowing, knowing uh, kind of tremendous work we are doing. So it was actually a great one because because uh, in my profession, we use imagery. And uh, I do training on uh, uh, Google Earth Engine where I, I train a, a particular pattern. So the, the, the activities Unique Mappers have actually been doing was actually a great one because we were able to train imagery like trying to do over and over again to learn and it were able to understand a pattern of for a pipeline pattern for uh, oil spillage, pattern for healthy vegetation. And I, I think it's actually, it, was, it is actually a great experience to me. And uh, I would love to keep contributing because uh, I think I have actually seen the kind of tremendous uh, um, activities that I'm doing. So thank you. Awesome work, we appreciate you. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing is you can join the project on SciStarter. We'll update you when you can contribute. Um, I know there were some technical glitches at the moment, but I know Cardoscope is on it. Um, so maybe, Emma, if you want to go back to the main slides, we can perhaps wrap up. I know Victor and Kingsley both have spoken really movingly about what the project means to them and how people can participate. So, Emma, is there anything else you think we need to cover today? Um, yes, there's, uh, or we can talk a little bit about uh, land loss lookout because I know that's where Healthy Gulf came about. So if you want to talk a little bit more about that, I have um, slides for you there. We can also talk about um, the, um, I had the group up before here. I'll just show you the one that I'm saying. And instead, stop share. Um, yeah, we kind of went off script. So we've got slides going in different directions. Sorry about that, everyone. Um, okay, there we go. Rather than off script, we call it keeping it conversational. Um, we've had a, a conversational time, but I like it. You know, it's you all are seeing the real um, unfeathered, you know, working process behind these projects. And yeah, I mean, I kind of mentioned it earlier, but I know some people joined late. Joined late. Um, the project started because Cardoscope, Healthy Gulf, and Northeastern University um, had this project Land Loss Lookout, which is similar. Uh, it uses the same technical platform, but people anywhere in the world can classify. Um, aerial images to document different types of wetland loss on the Gulf Coast. This wetland loss can be because of oil and gas, it can be because of, be because of sea level rise, uh, different reasons. And by documenting it and having the science-based result of what's going on where, we can um, co go to local leadership and um, identify where le wetlands might need restoration. So we can have, you know, a healthier Gulf Coast and a better world. And uh, Victor and his team, the Unique Mappers in Nigeria, they contributed to this project and really helped people out on the Gulf Coast so that, um, and you can still participate in Land Loss Lookout. There have been a few different iterations of it um, I, uh, based on the Gulf Coast. Um, but the same platform was used. So um, Healthy Gulf, Northeastern, Cardoscope, and the Unique Mappers now launched Land Pollution Lookout to use that same platform to identify, you know, oil spills in Nigeria, in the Niger Delta region, actually, I mean. Um, so that's, that's how it all came about. And then my connection to the project is when I um, had, was a pageant queen, when I was Miss Louisiana Earth, um, I championed the project and tried to get as many volunteers as possible to participate in Land Loss Lookout. Um, and then when I won the scholarship for Miss Earth USA, I donated my winnings to Healthy Gulf to help support these projects. Um, so I think this is just a, a tale of global connection and people in other places caring about people on the other side of the world and using science to identify what's going on with the environment in different places so we can have a jumping off point for um, you know, data-driven solutions. So that's the basic, basic gist of it. And yeah, Healthy Gulf, they're a nonprofit based on the Gulf Coast. Uh, Land Loss Lookout is one of their many projects. Um, and they, Healthy Gulf is a partner on Land Loss Lookout with uh, Northeastern, Cardoscope. Um, and now, you know, of course, the Unique Mappers, they've contributed so much to it. Uh, they're a partner as well. Um, and land pollution lookout wouldn't exist without the unique mappers championing it every step of the way. And there's more to come with these projects. I know there are different grants in the pipeline. Um, so these projects are going to be a lot, a lot around for a while. So we can keep on documenting environmental problems and advocating for solutions. Excellent. Yeah, thank you for that background. Um, since we don't have full results or we need uh, more contributions to land pollution lookout, we do have some reference points for the land loss lookout research findings. Um, such as the accuracy. So being able to say that we have this many people looking at the same images helps a lot with that accuracy. So the work done for Land Loss Lookout was incredibly impactful for that. Um, we also, this was this one, um, I don't have the background to maybe discuss this one, but um, if Caroline, if you recall the best way to describe this one. Yeah, I mean, I also, I'd recommend you all go watch some of our past webinars on this one because Sarah Wiley, um, she's actually in the Biden administration now. She's on leave from Northeastern University. Um, but uh, she's the, the brains behind analyzing this data that y'all helped classify. Um, but she found that sea level rise and oil and gas uh, contributed to uh, wetland loss. And wetlands are really important, right? They're the first line of defense against hurricanes on the Gulf Coast. More wetlands equals a safer Gulf Coast for everybody who lives there, including my family. Um, so being able to identify that oil and gas extraction, sea level rise are contributing to wetland loss, that's a huge finding. And being able to represent it to different patterns spatially, really important for trying to fix the problem. 
Excellent. I remember watching a video um, or a, um, a newscast with you involved in there talking about how the wetlands are a, are a line of defense for hurricanes and how when those are degraded, we get much more extreme extreme results. And so being able to note where we're losing all that land and losing um, our natural environment, it, it has catastrophic um, results, right? So it's important to keep in mind for both land, land loss pollution and land pollution lookout. Um, yeah, all those things are um, great to note. Thank you. Um, I think that we have, um, or unless any more content, or Victor or Kingsley, if you would like to mention anything about this uh, a little bit more, um, otherwise we can take any questions that are coming in and we will close out uh, when it looks like we um, are good to go. Victor and Kingsley, any more thoughts on um, any of these things and what this, what your hopes are maybe? <laughs> Oh, I actually have a question for Victor. Victor, I know y'all are planning a pretty cool conference coming up, and I know SciStarter is sponsoring a scholarship for it. If people watching, if they want to support you, where should they go? How can they support your efforts? Oh, that's great. Um, we have uh, we have State of the Map Nigeria Conference uh, coming up uh, 11th to uh 14th October uh, 2023, and uh, it's coming up at, in Abuja, uh, the Federal Capital Treasury of Nigeria. And uh, we have a website uh, for participants to register. Uh, uh, there also we have the prospectus for uh, prospective uh, uh, sponsors and uh, we like uh, everyone that wants to support the conference to check the website, uh, State of the Map Nigeria 2023 uh, website, and uh, go to the sponsorship uh, page and uh, take a sponsorship package and uh, complete and uh, uh, be out there to uh, support the conference. And uh, you can also register to participate in person or virtual. Uh, join virtual, yeah. And uh, uh, the conference uh, supports uh, civil science projects around open street map and uh, open source geospatial uh, uh, technology. Yeah, thank you. And uh, thank you also Science Data for being uh, one of the sponsors and uh, uh, for supporting the conference uh, by picking up a sponsorship package. Thank you. We are happy. Yeah, to... definitely. So we put the, the link in the chat for anybody. Yeah, we're going to be supporting one of the students going there. So if anyone else has moved to support financially, you can sponsor a student to come like we're doing. Um, I think it's only $500 for the lowest level. So it's pretty doable if you're in the States potentially um, to help support some folks in Nigeria. But otherwise, if you just want to give your time, you can participate in the land pollution from a lookout project and that's really important as well so there are lots of different ways to get involved and support um so i'm just i'm grateful for the opportunity i think um victor and kingsley do y'all have anything else before we go i will yeah also thank you everyone for joining this uh a uh, live uh, webinar to uh, review the land pollution lookout and uh, still uh, uh, request that everyone be part of this uh, project. It's here on. Uh, so find time to contribute. And uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you at the State of the Map Nigeria conference uh, being hosted by Unique Mapas Network. Thank you. Thanks so much, Victor. Um, Kingsley, any last thoughts or want to say? <laughs> yeah, think? thank you, everyone. It is actually great to be here with us today. So just like our national coordinator say, jump in and then help us contribute to solve divergent problem. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you both so much for being here. I appreciate you taking the time. It's been um, really nice to have you all come in and share your thoughts on all this. And it's really inspiring how this project came to be from from being a part of something across the world and then um, seeing uh, seeing how it can impact your own uh, your own world and your own your own community and have, finding a way to make it happen. So this is a really one of those stories of just beautiful inspiration of how citizen science can um, can change the lives of many. So um, thank you so much to both of you.
Um, I'm going to go over a couple of last items uh, that are all uh, for SciStart Alive and our Do NASA Science Live uh, uh, series happening over the next couple of years. And then we will close out um, with the uh, materials. Thank you so much, Caroline, for being with us and sharing your thoughts. I appreciate it. And thanks. Um, excellent. So next week, we are going to be talking about um, the wildlife camera trap images that are from Cedar Creek Eyes on the Wild. Um, it's a really fun project, and we'll be talking a lot about animals. Um, I have a feeling it'll be very family friendly, so bring your family so they can answer questions like, what's your favorite animal? Um, so be welcome to join there. We're also getting ready for National Dog Day, so bring your lab partner um, and join us on August 22nd. We're going to be revisiting a project from last year and also celebrating SciStarter's, uh, SciStarter Live's anniversary, not just SciStarter's anniversary. Um, and then the next week, we'll be talking about mosquitoes through NASA's uh, Globe Observer app. They have a mosquito habitat mapper on there, um, which is really interesting in terms of helping reduce the risk of mosquito-borne illness in your community. So uh, we're excited to show those things with you. We also have the um, Do NASA Science Live program happening with NASA um, that we would love to have you join for. We're doing um, events like SciStarter Live, but bigger and talking about NASA specific uh, projects. So for that one, um, this next upcoming one is on September 19th. It's at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time um, and it's all about eclipses. So we're coming up to two eclipses in one in October and one in April. So if you're interested in learning about how you can be involved um, using citizen science or just as a participant, uh, we'd love to have you join for that as well. Awesome. Those are it for events for the time being. Um, next, uh, you can always use any of our resources to reach out to us and send us an email if you need it. You will receive a follow-up email from this event. So Victor, that link, that 2023.state of the map Nigeria, um, I will send that in that link along with anything else you would like me to share. Um, and I will get that out to you all next week. So we look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks so much for joining us. If you're able to, please fill out the survey. It's not, it won't pop up automatically, but you can take it from uh, what's in the chat right now by clicking the forms uh, link right there. Should take you about two minutes too. Uh, in any case, you can reach out to us anytime you need um, at info at scistar.org and uh, we're happy to be here. So thank you all for being with us today and we will see you next week.